Welcome to another episode of Hip Hop Hoops Podcast. I am your host, Anthony Igadero. And I'm your co-host, Chris Blackwood. What up, what up, what up, what up? Let's go. Listen, man, we got, we got a special guest with us today, man, Mr. Matthew Wright, man. Uh, we're going, we going, we going global right now, yeah. baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's all the way in Japan right now. And um, the time difference is, like, just way off right now. It's, uh, what is it, 11 like o'clock hours. over? Yeah, 14 so, hours. Yeah, so it's in the morning for us over here, and it's at night over there for him. So, you know, the grind Thank don't you. stop, man. The grind don't it stop. Don't. But we appreciate you for, you know, taking the time. I know you just came off a, a road trip, you know, with your team. Um, and uh, I know you're pretty tired, man. So I don't, I don't want to hold you too long. So we'll get to it, brother. But we appreciate you for taking the time and, and talking with us, man. So thank you for that, for sure. Of course, man. It's my pleasure. Yes, sir. And shout yes, out to Roy Rana for making this happen, man. So, you know, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great guy and a, a real one for us. So, um. I, I just want to get into just the beginning, man, the humble beginnings of, of you and, and your basketball journey. I want to talk about that and how it all got started, man. Because um, um, you being Filipino, right, um, basket, the Filipino basketball community right now is huge. Huge. Yo, it's listen, huge. man. I'm coaching. I'm coaching at Yace. I'm talking about from that grade six to eight era. Yo, when I mean you got some some solid Filipino hoopers. Yeah. And yo, they give me the business. I got to like do scouting reports because <laughs> all of them, their jumpers are always wet. I don't know. Maybe maybe they took that from Matthew and got, you know, inspired by Matt. You know what I mean? But like the IQ is there. The speed is there. The jumper is wet. And, 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 and the community, the Filipino community is so huge, especially in the six, basketball wise. It's like everybody's connected. And yo, Matt, do you feel like, you know, you had some kind of influence on that? I can't take any credit for that, man. Filipinos been love basketball from, from day one. Facts. That's definitely the most uh, infatuated race on planet Earth when it comes to the sport of basketball. Like, they love basketball. They love all things hoops. So, you know, you know how it is in the GTA. There's bare Filipinos everywhere, all over Vaughn, Saga, Scarborough. Everywhere. Like everywhere. Mark and them. you're right, from the <laughs> sure. great, from like that middle school era, that like grade six to eight, like Filipinos are some of the best basketball players. And then they stopped growing. <laughs> I think, I think, I think that, I think that's the, the, that is the, that is like a fact. Like, you know, sometimes, sometimes. I'll be honest with you. It's true. Like when all the black and white kids catch up to, to the height, the skill is there, right? And the right. And Filipinos develop early. But once it gets to high school, you know, it's hard to be, you know, there, there's a dime a dozen five, eight Filipino point guards, right? They're everywhere. Right. <laughs> right. So it's tough. It's tough to break through. But I know exactly what you're talking about, man. They love basketball. They die I love it, fans. man. And solid, solid to watch, man. I mean, they keep me up at night, man. I got a few guys, Gabe, Sean, Nick. There's a few guys out here, man, at that age group. That I really, I gotta stay up late. I gotta call Roy sometime. Like, yo, Roy, man, how do you how do you set up a defense for like a sharp shooter, man? You know, you gotta box and one of them real quick or something crazy, you know, or, or triangle in two. But um, nah, salute to the community, man, the Filipino community. Y'all show me love all day, every day. Maybe because I'm I'm five seven as well. You know what I mean? But it's all, but it's all good. The love is there, man. And yo, just continue to grind, man. Jordan Clarkson in the NBA repping. Repping the Filipino community heavy. Jalen um, Green as well. Jalen Green. Jalen Green. You know what I yeah. mean? So you guys got some six-footers out there still. And I want to shout out yeah. Nicholas the Boss too, man. He had a special event, man, for the Filipino community. He had office yes. hours. Nick the just, Boss. Shout out yeah, to Nick. So That's my guy. I want to shout out him, man. Real, He's a real one. He came on the That's show and supported us, man. We support office hours, man. So Office hours all day. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, I'm not. So, so going back to just high school in Toronto, um, uh, you 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 attended Martin Grove Collegiate. Uh, how 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 was that for you? I know you said you um you played for Sean Green, so um shout out to him. How was he an inspiration for you um in your basketball development? Well, Martin Grove was my home school. Um, at the time, growing up in Capri, we had a lot of basketball, like a lot of talent coming out of that small neighborhood. Uh, guys like Marvin Binney, you know, who went to Eastern. Mm -hmm. Like for some reason, like all of us. We, we had a great middle school in Bloor Lee, 
we won a city we won a city championship and we all decided to go to separate high schools for whatever reason i guess everybody wanted to, you know their own little shine everyone wanted to be the man on the team so uh you know i really wish we all just went to margo but everyone kind of went to their own separate ways um you know i decided to stay local because like i'm not taking a bus in the subway all the way to Don Lands, you know what I mean? Like from Chicken State, that's crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not. He was Marvin was waking up at like six in the morning to go to school. You know? so I, like, I couldn't do that. Love the dedication, uh, but my God, that's far. <laughs> but but Sean Sean used to hold middle school tournaments as a way of like I guess recruiting kids. Yep. So he would host a lot of middle school tournaments at Martin Grove in the Rexdale, East Mall, West Mall area. Like he would grab you know a bunch of those schools, the middle schools there to see the kind of talent, and then he would kind of hand pick who he thought was was good and he would just kind of convince him to come to Martin Grove. And at the time, Vaughn Road was the the dominant team in West Toronto. The, mm-hmm. This is with Ashley. This is with Alex. Yep. Uh this is with with Nem. I'm sure you can you know all those guys. Ibrahim, yeah. these guys were nice. Yeah. And they yep. they they were, they were the ones running meet running meet in Vaughn Road every year. And mm. I wanted to be a part of a team that like kind of came out of nowhere and like be a part of the like, the process of building it to a, a championship caliber team. And we got our ass kicked. We were getting smacked by these guys. But eventually <laughs> with the right people, eventually with the right people, by my grade 11 year, I played senior grade 10. We were getting clapped. But in grade 11, we won the West, West Toronto. Then grade 12, we won Toronto Cities against Central Commerce. Nice. And then we went to Offset both years and then my fifth year, we actually won Offset three A against Loyola. Mm. That was a big one. So it was kind of like you know we really grinded from the bottom. Where we were we were not a powerhouse team, but Sean, we used to practice in the summer. Facts. Mm. Develop that chemistry. We would we never had we never had tryouts at school because mm. Sean wasn't he already knew the kids that he won on the team, and we were already practicing on the low. So we weren't even letting <laughs> outs. There was no bulletin on the board like trials for Martin Grove. Sean already knew who he wanted on the team. It was, uh, it was that kind of, he was serious. Like he really wanted to build a contender and he did. And I'm proud that I went there. You know, I could have went to a lot of other high schools, but I'm glad I did it the right way. Stayed local, stayed with my boys. It's mm. different when you win a championship with your boys. You know what I mean? Like yeah. uh, it was yeah. really special. You know, I, I could never taste that in high school. I had to deal with bathers all the time. Make it to the, <laughs> make it to the semis and then. No, make it to the finals and actually lose to Bathurst. So Bathurst is damn, tough, man. You know what they I mean? Tough. They were tough. Bathurst they were, is tough, bro. <laughs> they were tough, man. But um, yeah, Bathurst is tough. Yo, having that winning formula from the jump, you know what I mean? And then bringing that to St. Bonnie's. Like, talk about that process, selecting St. Bonnie's. Like, how did St. Bonnie's become, or St. Bonnie Veterans, I should say, become uh, a landing spot for you? Mm-hmm. I was very under-recruited at the time. Um, I knew that I had the talent. I knew I was better than a lot of guys who were getting looks. But, you know, this was this was pre-Twitter, pre-Facebook, pre-Instagram era, right? It was very hard to mm-hmm. market yourself into like, like you really had to like record games and like send tapes out back in the day. Like people don't even know how hard it is because now it's so, it's, it's a lot more easier. But, you know, I wish we had social media back then. It would have been a lot easier to recruit. But uh, St. Bonaventure came knocking on the door, uh, you know, one of like maybe five or six schools. And I went on, I visited the campus. Andrew Nicholson was there. He mm. was, he just came off of a career sophomore year. He broke so many records. records. Yep. And, you know, he's a saga man too. So like, you know, we had, we had an instant connection and, you know, he, he and I were just killing the pick and roll in the open run. You know how it is you go. Yep. So they, 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 they throw you into the fire right away. They make you play five on five. So yep. me and Andrew had a nice little connection and Andrew, I guess, convinced him that, yo, sign this guy. Like, you know, he's nice. So I remember, I'll never forget, I signed my letter of intent the last possible day. Um, and I signed it at Loblaws at the frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I signed it at Loblaws because it was the only place around me that had a fax machine. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so you, you had to you get know, it done like right away. Right away. I think it had to be done immediately. So. I had, I didn't had no time for like a little you know press conference with a hat. You know, like I'm this. I literally was in Loblaws and in a white right. beater at the Let's meat go. section of the deli at the frozen at the deli, deli section deli. at the deli. Fam. Like really, like this is a real true story. <laughs> Just trying to get my facts Whoa. in time. Crazy. Yo, it's crazy. It's, and and it's crazy how everything comes full circle. Like to to the to the point where like yo, 
you're this big time pro player. And just imagine, like, you didn't even do the celebration when you were signing. You signed that with your marina on at a fax machine. <laughs> at a deli. I mean? Don't in, forget that. At a deli. In, in Loblaws, <laughs> baby. Deli, yeah, Loblaws. <laughs> Shout out Loblaws, man. That's legendary right there. That's legendary, <laughs> man.